Hi guys, um, you're probably wondering why you're looking at a potty plane. All will be revealed. Please don't run a mile. We are going to be looking at um, uh, nodes. And if you are a truly creative artist and you just really like to create pretty pictures and stuff, um, you'll probably usually run for the hills at this kind of um, uh, this kind of uh, tutorial. Um, but getting a good understanding of how 3D or how Maya is working um, is going to excel um, your knowledge exponentially. Um, and I'll show you why. So stick with me, I will show you a really simple way of understanding what these horrible things look like uh, called nodes inside of the Hypershade. So let's get a Hypershade open and I'm just going to talk you through it. Don't expect there to be any pretty pictures or, or kind of nice amazing outcome out of this. This is purely a technical um, tutorial and one that you will kick yourself if you don't know because I'm going to explain it to you in a really simple way. So we've got this selected. I'm just going to get the outliner open as well. Follow along with this if you want because it's a, it's, it's a good one to do. There's our plane selected. I'm just going to graph the network by clicking this little button here. It's just going to show our input and output connections, as Maya kindly lets us know. And here we go. Ah! What the hell is this? I can't stand it. I don't like it. I don't need it. I just want to make things look nice. But you are going to need this at some point. And I'll show you why. Okay. So, let's start at the top. The one that we've got selected, we can see in the outliner here. That's the P-plane. That is known, and you've probably heard a lot of people refer to it, and excuse me if I'm going over things that you already understand, but this is for the masses. Um, this is known as the transform node. Okay, It's the very first top hierarchy of an object, and it's called the transform node because if we look over here in the channel uh, box, we can see that we've got all of our transform options and attributes. So that's the very top that's um, excuse me that's what happens whenever you just go oh, I've selected this piece of geometry okay and what it will show it will show everything in these tabs which is down here that's that's all it's showing it's, show, it's showing this these are that okay so right at the very bottom and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and layer it up as best I can to try and sort of help me understand this a little bit more Right at the bottom, we've got our object. Okay, this is the purest form of our object, but you'll notice that when I select it, it doesn't select the object in the scene. Okay, that's because the shape node and the transform node um, will enable us to select it. So, this is just the baby, this is the seed, it is the beginning, um, and everything else above it help it have some options. Right, so it's it sort of said, Look, I need options. I must connect myself to a shape node and the shape node says I must connect myself to some shading because I like colour and this guy at the top he just kind of goes raw I am the transform node and you all sit underneath me I will go wherever I want to go and you guys will come with me because I need to make changes to myself as I go that's its simplest uh, uh, comedy form so um, what we can do with this uh, uh, mesh or object shape whatever you want to call it is we can see that what we've got in here is uh, the subdivisions and we've got um, the width and height yeah so when you first create a poly plane the first thing I do anyway is I select it and I go down here and I go oh where's me uh there we go there's me options right yeah I'll just drag these around and change these so what you're actually doing is you're selecting this and you're changing these okay so they're the options for it next up into the scene we've got the shape node um, that's how it's referred to but what is it it's basically a whole bunch of options which we call attributes um, for the object it contains uh, lots of uh, options to do with the mesh and the shape of the object um, it doesn't have much to do with color that sits over here next to it, it's his right hand man look there you go, he's got his arm uh, around him there you are my colorful friend alright so 
that's the shape node and it just contains all of these attributes and we can go in and we can change different tessellation attributes and turn off visibility and render stats and primary visibility and all of those options they're all sunk inside this dude that sits here and you can see that when that is selected it's selecting our mesh let's get the outline back again and we can see that it's not selecting the um, the highest group but in the drop down box it is there that's the shape node it is selected so uh, right hand man being its colorful friend over here we double click that it's uh, not going to show anything up in here which is fine but we know that this is its shader and because it's just come into the scene it is the uh, default Maya Lambert shader which is applied to everything so let's select the top man and let's add a new shader and see what happens so here's a blin and I'm going to select the top man and I'm just going to middle mouse you won't see my menu because my screen capture um, doesn't show the um, uh, the menu, the marking menu that comes up. Um, so, but basically now I'm just right clicking. I'm going to go up to the top one. It says assign material to selection. So that is assigned to it. And if I select it and then graph the network again, it's all back again. And let's just put it back how it was. You at the bottom, you there, you at the top, and your right hand man. And you can see now that the right hand man's new friend is Mr. Blin. And we all know what a blin is, and that's that basically. So, hopefully, that's covered the basics. Okay. Now, sometimes you might open a shape and it just looks absolutely mental in here, and it's not as bad as you think once you can find your key players, which are these guys. Okay. So, let's do something to this. Let's add a deformer let's add a lattice all right so there's a lattice around it but it's not showing up so well because it's on a yeah, it's on a plane um, I'll just grab a lattice point and we'll do that so we know this you know it has got a lattice on it so let's select it and let's go back into the uh, rendering of the hub shade and get it open and let's graph the network now oh my god so this is what you uh, one of your nightmares is about is trying to decipher all of this stuff and there's wires getting everywhere ah right but let's break it down because we know about our key players don't we yeah here's our main man transform node and as you can see as I've got him selected he's there once again um, he's a top man and all these dudes are down below him doing all of his work for him he's a bit lazy really but wherever I move this top man all this stuff should move with him and stick with him so there's our top man um, and then here we've got the shape um, let's find our shape node actually so here's our here's our blin let's get that up there here's the shape node here don't worry about all these lines in fact let's drag them all over here go away we're just going back to our original guys top man shape node right hand man color information now we've got some new things going on here so this is our bottom guy remember it's just got our subdivisions and width and height okay and now we've got a new guy now the new guy has turned up because we've created um, a lattice we've also created history in doing that so this guy turns up because Maya's really clever and it kinda says right you've created something that's going to really mess with the mesh yeah um, and I know that because you're a stupid user you didn't do your UV work first okay and you're gonna build this character and you're gonna rig him and you're gonna stick all the bones in him you're gonna move him around and then you go oh no I forgot to texture it and do the UV maps and they won't work properly now because I've got everything's rigged and I can't unrig it and if I texture it now then everything's just gonna go haywire correct that is going to happen, but because Maya's superior, it created an original shape node for you. Okay, so it's basically created a foul safe that says, Yes, you're going to screw around with everything afterwards, but here I am, I am the original guy, and if you need to retexture me, 
you can using this node. All right, so I'll just show you what this um, actually means. Uh, if I go into object display while I've got this original node uh, highlighted, okay, let's come down here and have a look quickly. So we can see that we've bent up our object using the lattice. If I untick, so inside object display, when you've got original shape, and you can see it's, it comes up next to it. I'm not sure if it's going to show up, um, but you can see that it says it there. Plane shape one, orange, orange for original, okay. If you untick intermediate object, let's have a little look down here with what's happened. There is our original shape. That is what happened at birth, all right. I'm not going to go into it in this lesson on how we're actually going to use it, but what I will do is just tell you a bit about it. If you've screwed around with something and you needed to have done your UVs or UV at first or whatever and you haven't and you've got a whole load of history and deformers and all stuff going on with it, this is your friend because it's your original guy and it contains um, UV information. So we could in fact um, Duplicate an object, or, or duplicate this even, bring him over here, retexture him, and then we can use something called transfer attributes, and we could transfer the attributes of the uh, of a mesh over here that had uh, new UVs on it back to this, and then it will project all its loveliness back through the hierarchy and save our goddamn life. Um, so let's just untick it so it's gone, but just to know it's there. So when you start going through your tree, that everything that was looking horrible just now all of a sudden we've started to move things around and it doesn't look so bad these are our main guys over here this is our new guy he's saving our life later on this is our top man transform node shape node shading group and then over here quite simply we've got the lattice information this tweak this is history okay that's why it's got a history type paper look to it this is where you've done something that's probably when either when we created the lattice or when we tweaked it by pulling up that uh, top corner over there and there's some more uh, history over here um, these are sets I'll talk to you about those another time but here is our lattice and we can flick through these and just quickly get to our um, different information that we want. We can even go to the history. Maybe we did something on the history a little while ago we didn't want to do. We can go back and tweak it because it's still there and we haven't deleted it. Um, obviously you don't really want to be deleting uh, the history on a lattice because that's going to get rid of your lattice. Um, so yeah, it looks it all looks weird because there's all these lines going everywhere but these lines are important because later on we're going to need to come in and um, we might want to do something in between these lines. We might want to do something in between in between the shape node and the uh, shading group. Maybe we want to add another node, which is what all of this stuff over here is about that you're probably not aware of or don't even want to look at. Um, and we can add in between things some different mathematical functions. Did I just say mathematical? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, some function that makes things look prettier in a different way. That's what I meant. So guys, I'm going to keep it short just so you can ingest this. I will come back with more of this sort of stuff. But hopefully you can just use this as a reference. Play around with it. Get some nodes out. Do it in a scene where you're not going to destroy Maya. Um, and just start to understand it. Because it was, it's going to come in handy later on. Especially if someone passed you an asset that has got, I don't know, um, lots of animatable uh um, properties about it and you need to get in and find your original uh, shape node and retexture it or or something like that just remember your main players will always um, help you out if you find them and uh, maybe set them out in some kind of way that works in your mind okay nice one uh, speak to you soon bye bye